Hey guys, welcome back to the next video and this time it is a brand new product from CIT and this is the CIT Pro Glacier AIO. Let's see how this 48 pound AIO performs. Well then guys, another AIO, this time it's from CIT. This is the Pro, the Glacier AIO water cooler. Let's get this open, shall we? Okay, now this is brand new, it's literally just come into the UK. Oh. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Okay, right. Okay then, right, here comes the installation. This just will tell you how to install it. This will tell you how to install it, do, tells you what brackets it comes for, tells you what socket to support, and like that. Then, of course, then you get the bag full of... Uh, oh, there, what's this? What the hell are these? What's AMD? What the hell? Um, look at that, that's weird. Really funky, weird standoffs, that is. Thermal paste. And a little uh, spudger over there to thingy it. Spudge it down. So let's get this out now. Oh, the fans are pre-installed. That's good. I like that. Let's get this outside the box and take a look. Okay then. So there's the fans. Very, very much like Lee and Lee. But there, they have got infinity mirrors on the side. Which, of course... Are daisy chainable with a RGB, which is a normal standard three pin connector. And then of course the fans come pre already connected together with a four pin PWM. That is great. Yes, it's a bit of a mess, but at the end of the day, this is better than having any pr proprietary cables. This is better because at least you know what the cables are. So it's 240 millimeter AIO. This then, of course, does have a display. Then we've got the copper base plate, which is a basic copper one. Ah, oh, this is rot this is rotatable. It's got RGB around it. Looks nice. Now this base plate's massive. That's really, really big. Comes with mounting already pre-attached. I mean, it's just a standard AIO, to be honest. So let's have a look at some of the specifications. Okay then, so the radiator is aluminium, of course, standard AIO radiator, of course dimensions 275 by 120 by 27, 27 being the millimetre, the thickness, the pump, which would be in the housing, but here the pump is between 2250 and 2750 RPM, with a noise decibel of 30 dB and the, also, the input DC is 12 volts. Now, for the fans. These are 120s by 120s by 25. 25 being the thickness. Now, the speeds can go from 700 to 1600 RPM. Also, when it comes to airflow, these can push a airflow rating of, which is CFM, it's 64.5. That's not the overall best when it comes to uh, airflow. The fan pressure will be 1.9 millimeter H2O. The overall noise, we will check that, of course. States by here, it says it's 30 dB for the fans. The overall connections, of course, like I've said, 4 pin PWM, 5 volt, 3 pin ARGB. They have got this rated for 30,000 hours of runtime. And then, of course, the DC. Voltage N is 12 volts. So that's it for the overall specifications, except for it does support LGA 1200, 1500, 1700, 1366, and 2011, which is very old. AM4 and AM5, of course. Now let's get this into the overall test bench and see how it does, shall we?
This is the CIT Pro Glacier 240mm AIO. This is a 50% fan speed. Can't even hear it. This is 100% fan speed. Even at 100%, these things are near silent. Okay then, so when it comes to the overall benchmarking, I've done two different types of tests. One, the 5900X at default settings, and one with PBO enabled. So, the room temp during the test was 17 Celsius before I started, and it did go up by 2 degrees, so 19C. So, for Cinebench R23, 5900X default settings. I Idles... 32 with a max of 67, Blender Pavilion, Idles 32 with a max of 72, and Blender Classroom, Idles 32 with a max of 65, 3D Mark CP test, Idles 32 with a max of 68 Celsius. So, for 5900X plus PBO, the CPU draw power was high at 204 watts with the lows at 185 watts. CPU clocks high with 4.9 with a low of 4.2, but well above clay, uh, base clock, so you haven't got to worry. Room temp, like I said, 17, went up by 2 degrees, so 19 Celsius. So, Cinebench R23, idles 34 with a max of 85, Blender Pavilion, idles 34, max 82, Blender Classroom, idles 34, max 82, and 3D Mark CP test, idles 34 with a max of 77 Celsius. Now what I'm going to do is actually put up a graph by here showing you the differences between the other two uh, 240s I've got here. I don't have many, but I do have some here. It will give you a rough idea of which one is actually the better option to buy. But we'll get into pricing, and to be honest, it's quite attractive at this price point. Okay then, so what do you think? Now, what I'm going to tell you is what I do like. I like the Infinity Mirror. I've always liked that type of RGB. The fans whisper quiet. I like the fact that it looks fantastic when it's lit up. They're the good points. The Obviously, the other point as well, it did perform within what a 240 will. But the bad point, you probably can actually see it in the background by here, and you can see that little display, but they're not, it's just saying zero. It's because the software you've got to install, you have to load it up every single time you boot into Windows manually. For people who are who don't like that, yeah, I get it, but for some reason I've tried, you cannot set it to auto boot when Windows uh, boots up. It does not have that. I've tried everything to get that to work, but it would not allow me. And the overall display, yes, it is the, uh, quite accurate. It only does show the package temperature, which if you were going for like the individual ccds then it's it won't pick that up it's the package for the whole entire cpu now that's the only gripe i've really got with it and other than that i think for the price point it's within the margin of error when it comes to the overall performance yes it went to 85 but it didn't go beyond 85 it stayed at that once the aio was saturated during the test so for me that's actually a good thing because at least you know, at full load with a monster of a CPU, which is a 5900X, especially with PBO, I've had this over 200 watts like I did with this one. It did well. It performed fantastically for its price point. Whether I like the software that you got to download or not, and just to you know, there's no links. There's only a QR code or you've got to type in the individual link. Yeah on the piece of paper you get which you probably saw during the unboxing part now the price point is very attractive it is 48 pound 99 pence which you can get on ccl i will make sure to leave links down below because if i can find it on other places like amazon and stuff like that then that's up to you but also that it will be also on a uh, distribution website as well that'll be for primarily um businesses and stuff like that whether i'd buy this for a business um if you're uh, specifically doing it for like pc builds then i think the price is quite attractive and it performs quite well on a high-end cpu so yeah 
<laughs> I mean, if you obviously, if that's something you want, that's completely up to you. I'm not going to tell you to buy it. I'm not going to tell you not to buy it. So that's up to you. But I'll leave links down below. Make sure you just use my links. Gives me a kickback for the work I do. So yeah, look, I got loads of stuff coming here. I got loads of stuff to do, and I've got another CIT uh, product here. It would be a case, and it's a fish 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 tank type style case. But I think the price point will also be attractive as well. So make sure you subscribe for that. And as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you. This is Richard for Welsh Tech. Goodbye.